Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what closures are, and you'll be surprised how simple they are to understand once you wrap your head around the idea. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And now to get started, I just have really simple JavaScript on the left side here, and then the output showing up on the right hand side. And this is very simple code. We have a variable called my name, a function called print name, which prints out our name whenever we call it, and then we're calling that function. And as you can see, we're getting Kyle printed out over here on the side. And what you probably don't realize is this is using closures. This entire thing is one giant closure. And that's because most of the time when you run code in other languages, for example, you cannot access variables outside of a function inside of that function. That is just not always possible in other languages, but it is possible in JavaScript. And this is what we call a closure. So this variable that is external to this function is actually available internally inside this function. This is a global variable essentially, and it's available inside this function. And the way closures work in JavaScript is that every scope, so for example, we have the entire JavaScript file, that is one scope, and then our function is another scope. So every scope has access to everything outside of its scope. So our function has an outer scope of our entire file, so it has access to everything inside the outer file. And one thing that's really interesting, so if we change this here to a variable that can be renamed, so we have our name is Kyle up here, and then we change our name down here, we'll just say that the new name is going to be Joey, and we save that, you can see this now prints out Joey. And so it's not just taking the name that is defined when the function is defined, it's actually taking the current live value of that name. Because for example, if we have the name here, and then we come down here, change the name to something else, we'll change it to Kate, and then we print out the name one more time, you can see that it says Joey and then Kate. It's constantly going with whatever the most recent value of that variable is. And now this right here is not the most useful way that you can use closures. I mean, it obviously is a way you can use them, but when most people think of closures, they think of functions inside of other functions. So let me jump to another example now. So here is the more common use case of closures where most people talk about closures. And as you can see, we have a function here called outer function, and that function is returning another function inside of it called inner function. And as you can see down here, we're calling outer function with the variable outside. So now we are getting a new function. And then lastly, we're calling that new function with the variable inside. So what's happening is that when we first call this outer function, we have this outer variable, which we set to outside, which gets set. And then we have this function that gets returned here. And the reason we're able to access this outer variable inside of this function is because of closures. And now it's kind of weird when you think about it at first because this outer function runs and this outer variable is only available inside this function. But this function is done executing. For example, if we just remove this code here, you can see nothing prints out. And that's because we call this outer function right here and it executes all of the code and then it's done executing and this outer variable is no longer accessible. For example, I can't log out the outer variable. If I try to, it's just gonna give me an error. As you can see, it doesn't actually exist. So how is the inner function able to access this outer variable even after it's done being executed? Because the outer variable has gone out of scope and that is where closures come in. So what happens is this inner function is essentially saying, okay, I'm inside this outer function. It has this outer variable. So I'm going to save this outer variable. I'm going to make sure I know what this outer variable is at all times. And even if the function that defined this variable is no longer executed anymore, it exits out of the function, it's okay. I'm still going to keep track of the outer variable. And that's why you can see outer is being printed out outside here. And we have the inner variable also being printed out. If I, for example, pass in an inner variable, you can see it gets printed out right there. And the most common use case for this a lot of times is to have variables that you pass into functions that can then be accessed inside of other functions. We could also create a variable inside of here. We're gonna call this outer two, and we're gonna set this equal to high. And we can also log that inside of here. So we can say console.log outer two, and you can see high is being printed out. Again, this is inside the scope that is outside this function, 
So this function is contained inside this function. So everything in the outer function is available inside the inner function, since in JavaScript, anything on the inside has access to the things on the outside of its scope. Essentially, it has access to its parent scope, its parent's parent scope, and so on. Everything that is outside of it. And it has access, of course, to the things inside of it. Now this here is a fairly contrived example. So probably one of the more common use cases where you're gonna see this is if you're using something like Axios or fetch. So if we come in here and we have a function that's going to do fetch, so we wanna fetch, you know, for example, some URL. So we're gonna just say, you know, URL, whatever it is, some random URL that you're fetching. And then inside of here, you're going to have an actual promise that's being returned. So we can say dot then, and this is going to take a function. And this function is a function that's inside our outer function. And inside of here, we would have access to our outer variable. So we could say outer variable, for example. And in most cases, we'd probably pass in the URL here and we'd pass it in here. And again, we'd have access to that URL inside this inner function. And now obviously this looks a bit different. This is an arrow function, not a standard function, but either way, it's still a function defined inside of another function. And this inner function has access to all of the scope of this outer function. So it has access to this URL variable, even though this fetch is only gonna call this dot then function long after outer function is done being called. Really, all you need to know about closures is that when you have a function defined inside of another function like this, that inner function has access to the variables and scope of the outer function, even if the outer function finishes executing and those variables are no longer accessible outside that function. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.